Hi, it's another terrific day in Orange County, Southern California. Might get a little bit of rain. Today we have this beautiful tree here. This is a white alder, Alnus rhombifolia, also called a California alder. It's native to Western North America from British Columbia, Washington, Montana, Sierra Nevada, and down through Southern California. It loves to grow in our riparian habitats, chaparral, and various woodlands. And you find it at an elevation from about 300 feet up to 8,000 feet above sea level. It's described as a medium-sized deciduous shade tree. It grows about 50 to 80 feet tall. It's broad-leafed, open crown, broadly rounded shape, slender branches. It likes to be visited by the pileated woodpeckers and the red-breasted nuthatches. Let's take a look at the bark and the trunk here. So the bark is of course uh, pale, light gray, very smooth, sometimes even white. And it's smoother on the young trees. It gets a little reddish brown and scaly on the older trees. And down here at the base, of course it's uh, not smooth, it's all crunchy, brown, and a little uh, more furrowed looking. So in the wild, these mature trees, they can have several trunks coming out of uh, one single clump here. But when you find them uh, all manicured as an ornamental, you're gonna find them like here, just with one single trunk coming out of the ground. All right, so let's talk about the leaves. I'll get a close look at the leaves here. Let's see if I get one here. Very full tree. Oh my gosh, absolutely beautiful. Let's just get a leaf here. There we go. All right, so our leaf here, put him down. All right, so he's a rhombic to narrow, elliptically shaped. And that's how he gets his uh, species, rhombifolia from its shape. They're a little wedge at the bottom and they're about 1.6 to 4 inches long and they're finely serrated here at the margins. Sometimes you even what's called double serrated and they come to this uh, little acute tip. They're dark green and glossy above and below they're a little yellow green at the bottom. They got this really super defined vein structure going right at the middle and also the uh, little side branches. And the underside is a little bit hairy. Okay? And these leaves, they alternate up the stem. And the flowers, well, this is a monoecious plant. So the males and the females are on the same plant. And they don't have our traditional flowers, they have what's called catkins. This little guy here, little tube-like guy, he's called a catkin. I'll pull him down, we'll take a better look here. Okay, this here's the, um, the male catkin. He's uh, it's called pendulous, which means he hangs down like this. He's slender, about one to four inches long. Sometimes they're a little yellowish to brown in color. These guys are a little greenish. They arrive in early spring before the new leaves emerge and they produce pollen which is primarily windblown. This is the male catkin and the female catkin. We'll find one up here. Here we go. Okay, here's the female and she looks like a little cone. See that? A little bit of a cone. Okay. And uh, she kind of looks like a small conifer cone. It's ovoid, sort of a egg-shaped, short and erect, a lot smaller than the male, only about a half inch to an inch long. And these guys bloom after the males from late summer through winter. Then they produce small winged seeds which get uh, dispersed in the uh, wintertime. 
And the mature catkins, like this one here, it's really woody and barrel shaped. And after they're all done, they get a blackish looking cone and they sit on the tree for up to a year. That's our uh, little flowers here. And you see it real close. All these catkins hanging down up here and the female and the males. So this plant gets really covered with what we call these flowers here. So does our uh, white alder, does it have any uses? Well, the wood can be used for firewood, lumber, furniture, cabinetry, on your doors, other woodwork. If you get real desperate for survival, you can eat the catkins, raw cooked. They're high in protein, but they got a uh, bitter flavor. And the bark can be dried and used as a flavoring in soups or mixed with flour for your cooking bread. And the red dye from the bark can be extracted, used in textiles, and put into a tea. When you drink it, it induces you to uh, sweat and perspire. And the Native Americans used to have what's called sweat houses, where they'd eat this and kind of sweat out their, uh, their body. And then additionally, the Native Americans, uh, they also used it to help with some female health concerns. To grow this plant at home, or this beautiful alder at home, Okay, it grows in uh, USDA Zone 6. It likes full sun. It's fast growing, grows about three feet per year. They live about 150 years old. They tolerate heat, wind, infertile soils. Sometimes they attract tent caterpillars. Most of the common problems with this plant is overgrowth with extra unruly secondary branches. So you have to stay on top of your pruning to keep uh, its really nice shape. If you don't prune it, it'll look all shaggy and unorganized. And uh, the more you prune it, the more you encourage flowering each year. And you keep out the old rotting wood to keep out uh, diseases or pests. So every time you see a broken branch, make sure you prune it. And deadhead the flower stems. And to do that, you just uh, cut off just below the flower heads. So when you prune it, like here, you just cut off this portion right there of these flowers to keep this guy going nice and pretty. Now the white alder looks like a red alder, but uh, if you look at the leaves real close by, side by side, the white alder has more yellow green leaves and finely or double serrated margins. And the red alder has margins with teeth that are rolled under, a feature called revolute margins. But for the most part out here, except when you're right on the coast, you're gonna find our white alders that are used for ornamentals out in our parks. It's a wonderful tree. I'm gonna step back, take one more look at it. See what we have here? Our white alder, Alnus rhombifolia. How about that? Okay, thanks for watching the video. Have a great day, bye.